So I would like to invite the last speaker of this session, Andreas Kernig. He's He earned a diploma in space systems engineering from the University of Stuttgart. And he's going to speak about space unconference. Hello everybody, it's a really great pleasure for me speaking about some of my hard projects here, it's called SpaceUp, and I am only one of very few people going right now presenting this here on, on their behalf because there is a global community and we did, like you see, it's a really collaborative way in doing everything, we even did this paper, paper together, so there are even more and I'm just a tiny little local organizer presenting this big, big foundation. Okay. I'm presenting our 21st century approach for space outreach. Like you see, it's going to be a little bit colorful here. And um, it will be an introduction. Space up will be described. Space ups worldwide. There will be even my Stuttgart edition described in it. How we're doing social media in here and integrate it. A small outlook what we are planning to do or what, what could happen. And the conclusion and what kind of lessons learned we have. Okay, to give you an example, um, you have been here on a normal conference, so everything is like, uh, everybody, everybody is here teaching to an audience that could listen, but shouldn't, or whatever. Sometimes it's really hard to tell, so we want to do it in a little, little bit different way. So we are using some different techniques, calling unconferences and bar camps, and unconferences heading back into the 1983rd years, and it was um, some, somehow invented by Harrison Owen. It's called their open space technology, like not sitting in rows, sitting in a great half circle. Somebody's presenting here, including everybody, so that everybody can be encouraged to participate in somehow like panel discussions or doing feedback. So it's a big mix up afterwards. But the big thing about it is the law of two feet. The long sentences here, like, if it's too much for you, you should go to another thing, watching there, and then participate. So, love to feed means you will just walk away when it's too boring for you, but you're not, not leaving the compound, you're going to another session and start there and integrate yourself. And this here is open in an uh, open space meeting in NASA Goddard. So, I think you know what I'm talking about. The other thing is called bar camp. It's like, if you, uh, like you have seen before, it's more like a conference area somehow in our community club and bar camps can be everywhere like the name is mentioned it could be in a bar somehow in an environment you like and um, it's open for everybody then not even for another people and the current bar camps have an emphasis on open technology and the web of course and it's very well supported by the uh, internet people um, the evolution, uh, evolutionary idea is here uh, based on um, discoveries by Tim O'Reilly, oh, really? right? I hope it's correct spelled. Um, uh, he did some findings that the most productive times during the normal conference is during the coffee break. So when everybody is leaving here, going to the coffee shop or coffee machine, then everybody starts talking even more than they're doing right now. So he said, I just screw the conference and do everything near or somewhat like the coffee machine area, like just talking about everything we like. So when somebody has, if somebody has an idea, he's just talking about it and has uh, some kind of comfy uh, atmosphere around it. So nothing strict, nothing like we have to prepare a lot of scheduling and so on. And this works very well until uh, 2000, um, since 2005 there have been 350 cities around worldwide about major and different topics. And um, yeah, so various topics I couldn't even describe it in here. How, how does it all work? Like in the, on the very first slides, it's somehow self-organizing. You have a lot of posty stickers. You just write down the name, like here, the name is the easiest part. You have a title for your talk. So you can just keep it short um, for your unique speech. I like it because how to pick up women when you are a space engineer. I'm a space engineer. It's really my topic here. And you just glue it in an open slot on an organized schedule somehow, and then when there's this free, a free slot, you just do the presentation then. So in this case, it's just five minutes, it can be 20 minutes or whatever the organizing team is allowing there. And normally you allow everything. So this is my session in Stuttgart, like I thought you see here. One of the big things are lunch breaks, like coffee breaks. And 
um, everybody is looking how is their free slot and um, rearranging it. And this um, Stuttgart edition was special because it started snowing this day. And somehow we German are not prepared just now. And then we had to reorganize everything because some attenders didn't attend. But others tried, hey, that's my chance. Took posting stickers, made something up, posted somehow where he could manage to do another presentation, sat on the stairs, stairs and did a five minute presentation with some basic slides, but with a great talk. So it's very, very flexible in this. And we have been lucky to use this kind of thing and not relying on um, pre scheduled thing nobody is really interested in more. And the flexible thing is even going so far that everything changes. We try to do a basic setup. But after some minutes, it starts reorganizing by the users itself. We just had to put off, uh, we just had to hang on, hang on this kind of uh, poster, and then everybody is doing this. Oh, I want to switch with this guy, and then they do everything themselves. And it does constantly. It's very adaptive and self-organized chaos, I would call it. That's that the guy who invented this, and he uh, is Chris Radcliffe. He is a uh, founder and. Um, Executive Director of Space Foundation or something. And uh, he just says two words, so it's very easy. It has to be unconference and about space, and that's it. Every time you ask him, am I allowed? He's just pointing, do what you want, as long as it's space, he's fine with it. So the beginnings, the first kind of conferences. So when you don't have any idea what you're doing about, you have to start somewhere. And he uh, perspective and Jesse Clark. Um, before inventing this kind of thing, had been to a lot of conferences, and when they're heading to the Mars Society conference and National Space Society stuff, they said, okay, we have to do something else, we want to do something besides this, with similar approaches, but with other things that are based on unconferences and bar camps. So people needed to have an example. So they said, okay, nobody's knowing about it, at least in our community, we are just starting it, showing how it works. So they did um, some kind of space bar camp, I wanted to call it Space Camp, but in the US it's some kind of, some kind of a branded uh, name for uh, pupils going to the, to, um, during the vacation time doing a real camp and doing learning about space. So the participatory aspect is here. They wanted to have a new name, so they posted it on Twitter and somebody came up with Space Up, so they took it because it was still um, valid for registration everywhere. And their first Space Up had been in the Santiago Air and Space Museum in February 2010, so it's a little bit while ago, but we expected to have less participants, but in the last weeks, about 100 participants had been there, like um, registrating, pre registrating, and said, I want to do this. So nobody expected something. So even people across the US attended. There had been other representatives because it was close by, close by. Space companies had their representatives there, schools, and a lot of more attended just to have a look what is this new thing? And What's, uh, how can I integrate and how can I participate in it? And um, it was an overwhelming success in other cities in the US and Canada followed. And then I will just give you an example. We have two different kinds of talks right now and other um, participatory um, aspects you can use. And this is a T minus five talk. The talk is about five minutes. And I will give you an example because space is boring. I think nobody in here is really believing in it, but you can take whatever title you want and have a really great speech about it. And I really like it because I will give you. So space is boring, right? I'm a huge space nerd. I love space. I've always I wanted to be an astronaut. I would love to be a space tourist. But NASA is making space so boring, so 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 boring. I think you might have to go to the next sl it's slide. It might be jammed or something. But keep going. <laughs> hit hit the button up, up there. <laughs> Just hit the arrow. There we go. Space is this boring. So boring! Slides jammed, hit a button. <laughs> oh, there we go. This is NASA TV. Anyone's watched it? Did you stay awake for more than five seconds? This is the most boring thing ever. Seriously. They are talking to people on a space station that's going 18,000 miles an hour. <laughs> we, have a, we have a space station, we have a space shuttle, how cool are those names? Right now, they're talking about her and that she's sitting at her desk. I pulled this down from NASA TV this morning, this is today. <laughs> NASA's killing, killing, killing space. Why? <laughs> I'll tell you why. 
There are no human beings in space. There are robots in human bodies, okay? They're not allowed to talk like human beings and... Okay, it's more about encouraging people, so this is very, very... It could be impolite on the first glance, but it isn't. And he had some discussion with the NASA social event team and presentation team, so it's rumored that this kind of speech did influence the curiosity report, and I think this was, what was a really great event, so they had a really great coverage of everything, Twitter, and they uh, started doing the documentation, and um, Andy Cochrane had, I think, influenced them, but you should ask him by himself, because it's just a rumor. So the other kind of talk is the pay my T minus 20 talk. It's more like a normal talk, but just in 20 minutes. And uh, that's Chris well. She had been here, I think, uh, you took over, I think, today. The, the, first, the first presentation today yeah, had been, had been uh, titled that he had been the presenter, so at least he's here right now. Ah, yes, yeah. he's with us. Yeah, and he did a talk about <laughs> his Institute of Space Travel, space, interstellar, interstellar Travel, and he presented it in a full 20 minutes talk, and there is 10 minutes of discussion time, so it's a little bit longer than here, and it's on purpose. We have to have this because we are not only presenting ourselves, we want to have everybody discussing. So you can prepare slides or don't, choose the topic you like, share your opinion, and that's an important part here. Make everybody curious and answer questions as good as you can, and continue afterwards in the coffee break. That's a big point. And then, of course, the more uh, ad hoc events, like discussion rounds, you can do it basically everywhere. This is from Space Up Paris, and the other example is here, show for yourself. You don't have rooms, you, you, you don't need groups from rooms, for it. you can do it everywhere. Just start discussion. And of course, the more crazy things, there is a moon pie eating contest. I haven't tried these, but uh, I think it should be fun. Eating a double decker pie, drink one cola, and the first people, the first person finishing this um, is, is a winner. Okay, They get an award, like allowed to make a public statement afterwards, and Okay, we know that it's silly, but it's fun and good for socializing, and basically it's your event. You can start everything related to space, like uh, Chris Redcliffe stated, space and unconferences. Then you are, then it's your turn. Okay, to give you an example, that's the current situation. So we had some um, space apps in North America, then we are headed over to the European countries, and that's the crazy thing, I talked yesterday with Chris Redcliffe, and there's even a new one head listing here for Space of Barcelona. It's for World Space League. It's very close. So I think you should go there then, you. And um, on the last minute, it changes every day. So it's really, really flexible. So some, the yellow ones wanted to do it, but there is no state yet. And the, the red ones are wanted to do one, uh, are planning to do one. Okay. Starting here with 100, and then there's a huge distribution, so you can't tell if it's a big event, a small event, you just uh, you are allowed to do everything, and the biggest events I will come to later. And there's even space for you because the uh, progression line here is stopping in 2014. There's, um, yeah, there are still three slots in your city left, so you can choose a date then. Okay, going space up worldwide, giving you some example how various it is. The first space up outside the US and Canada area is. Space up here with you. If you want to have more information, ask Remco here. And it was in the Cosmodrome in, um, in game. And it was a mixture between public and industry. We are integrated, integrated a lot of social media and tweet up there because it's their specialty. In my subcut edition, it was more about students for students, and we invited professors, professors, and um, experts, and so on. It was a rather good mix there. And we started another new thing, like I was talking before, we got a new thing like 60 seconds to learn, you can do a video there. The Space Up India guys did um, the PES Institute of Technology in Bangalore. They concentrated on getting a co a facilitate collaboration between space enthusiasts because it's a very big thing over there and increase regional space awareness. And Space Up Paris, I wanted to go there, I didn't have time. So it was an easy headquarter the first time, the first in France, and um, it was really great because they even included Space Fest 5 in Tucson and the Mars 2013 workshop in Vienna via some kind of uh, streaming and um, other videos and other things. Okay, 
what we are doing is also not only doing the local stuff, we are also doing the um, Facebook and social media stuff. So it's a little bit um, this thing over here. Facebook and Twitter is a big thing here. And to give you some numbers, we only have so far about 2,000 users, but the most of us are in Facebook and on Twitter, and Twitter is a big thing. It's in there the most. So everybody knows what's happening over there. So we should even do some kind of Twitter edition some, some new time. And of course, uh, Remco is still here. He's a big supporter. He's doing a lot of stuff. So this is a rolling thing. Social media with videos again. Um, somebody is preparing uh, live streams on Twitter. So it could be a professional site like Space Hitcast, or you do it yourself as a live stream or just user, user content, doing small videos. It's allowed. And just integrate everybody. If you have some skill in anything related to space, you can put it here. So it's your chance in integrating and um, getting involved in space. OK, um, this is social media videos again. The 60 seconds to land videos we started <coughs> in Stuttgart are short videos, just 60 seconds, so, so you have to be precise. But you can bring people to locations that can't attend, like me. I have been in either headquarters. So nothing is failing because it was pre-recorded, but you can keep you can use it as a gap filler. So it's a nice gimmick. You can present yourself or your opinion or everywhere, and it's a nice thing. And if you want to, you can even do a short video here, tell how great IAC is, what you attended, how you like it, and then after when you are back home, you can uh, share it somewhere and tweet it, and on the next space up it will be presented. So just tweet it at 60 seconds to land. Okay, what's next? So there will be new space applications, like mentioned before in Barcelona, or perhaps in Brazil or China. At least there are some interested persons over there. And I would like to go to this kind of place in Berlin. I think it's a nice place if I can afford it. OK, it's inspiring, inspiring people everywhere, bringing, bringing space up really everywhere. Then for the existing ones, like our edition, other editions, we do a reiteration using the good things, leave, off, leave away the bad things but inspiring more people is also the essence, supporting other local teams and events. So I uh, also are in discussions with other teams, needing some help and hands nearby. Of course, emails is not a problem, I believe in the tent. And it's a great way in fostering networks. And fostering creativity, more crazy ideas. If you have some like the um, open orchestra, uh, open space orchestra, I think you are very welcome here. And the uh, <laughs> Mupa events, Mupa eating stuff, the 60 seconds to that we mentioned, PowerPoint karaoke, I will present your talk, you are mine, perhaps it's great or not, but at least we are all laughing about it and learn something. Space Race Charity, you name it, you will get it. Space Up Moon, is it on the moon or about the moon? So you can be specific. It could be a Space Up Mars edition and just concentrating on Mars stuff, so narrowing out down everything, but you are allowed to do it, just do it. And attach Space Up to other conferences like the ISDC. This has been happening, and perhaps there will be even more. OK, conclusion and lesson learned. Participants, they are mostly excited about astronomy and space exploration from inside and outside the space, um, in the space industry. Equal number of men and women from very diverse backgrounds. So interested in new communication methods, willing to interact, experiment, reach out, and so on. But in the essence, they want to meet people. They don't want to do everything by Twitter. They want to go somewhere, grab a bite, talking about everything in a local spot. And they have a high, high level of curiosity. They want to know things and ask questions. So at my student edition, there was a social worker. And she tell, told us as a comment, it's the first time she understood a rocket scientist, or in this case, a space scientist. So it was for everybody, not for experts, for everybody. But you can do it for experts, uh, experts or for other people. Just do it and be frank. And space apps, it's not limited to any location. You provide just a date and a location, and then they will come. You don't need to have a big infrastructure and being, OK, you should perhaps provide a beamer in some currency, current, but you can do it everywhere. So just be creative. It's easy to access. So in case of location, there is a space up nearby everywhere. And in knowledge level, you can just adapt. Yeah. If somebody is waiting hand, I don't understand any words, and you can even do it, and nobody is uh, for to make it at you. It's a cheap event, but priceless event, so you can do a big gala event or just do a one-day event without anything to eat. Okay, it's a bad thing, but you can do it. It's rather cheap. Ours was only, okay, I would do a number here, 500 euros, and we had 80 people for one day, and it was really, really great. 
And um, fostering ideas and creativity is a big thing. Gathering diverse people, which is gaps between experts and laymen. And I think this is a very big point here. And integrate all methods and use uh, the best parts. Conferences, socializing, new media, you name it, you will get it. You just do it. You just have to do it. I'm just here for Kurt doing the location stuff. But expect everything. You are starting somehow, and then an hour thing is like there's a snowstorm, you have to rearrange everything, but in this case, everybody's hating you. And I'm like, oh no, I'm, I'm the man with the head. Okay, and of course, you want to do more space ups, so that's now you. So, space up your city, you can just start. Do it. It's very easy. We just had two persons, me and Anya, we did, we did plan it for two months, and then we just asked our friends for the um, event, for the for the location events to help us, to bring some braces and to help us visit email and stuff, but only two people and we really nailed it down and that thing. We didn't get any bad reaction about it. And the bad things have been really, really helpful. Like, okay, you should do this and this and so it's not bad at all. And, like I mentioned before, we can integrate it to another event like this if you want us to. I spoke with some people person here that are interested in the press. We just have to um, discuss it. So, when you have uh, your presentation done, instead of going to a bar, you can even do this PowerPoint karaoke with your friends and drink something. So it's, it, is, it is possible, and I think it's a nice way in achieving um, other conferences up or even do our part. So I hope you understood me. Thank you for your attention. But the most important thing, thank you for participation. This is for our participants and for our participants on spot and for all the um, localizer, localizer organization teams that are having me writing this paper. And so, yeah. ah, no, I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> by a similar format um, than the sign slams um, which are coming up very strong in Germany at the moment. Um, well, I'm a bit skeptical about this because it's a more, well, a, a kind of TV-like communication of scientific issues. It's okay to reach a large, um, a larger public. But they go there because the, it's just for, well, just looking TV, yes? And um, I don't know how sustainable is finally this is. So I, it's just my personal experience about being there on the science now. That's a good point. That's, that's really a good point. So when you are open for everybody, you have to expect everything. So you can, you can do a lot of expertise thing. If I want to do my presentation about my topics, I will do an expert thing. But if you're just a layman and interested in stargazing, you're doing the stargazing thing. It is open for everything. So I think this is a great thing. You can include everything. And then, okay, if you want, if you want to go there to get the newest sci science news about something and don't get it, okay, you could be disappointed. But this is the point. You can expect everything and get nothing. But I think that's an interesting point. And uh, there's a, a small niche for everything, like your science plan or educational camp or space apps. We had some great, great participants, like almost 2,000 people worldwide. Okay, perhaps in two years it's not working anymore. Who knows? We just try it and do our best. And if we reach 1%, that's good enough. At least I had a lot of fun uh, organizing this, and I got to know a lot of people. And so that's the big thing, then there are two. If you want to have really knowledge, okay, then you have to read some books or go to science then. But if you want to have perhaps some knowledge or perhaps some fun and so on, I think space up is then a good idea. Even my mother would attend, but she had to find <laughs> Do we have more, more questions? Now, uh, we have all the four speakers of the session here in the room, so if anybody has some question for any of the speakers, please feel free to ask them. 
I'm not sure. I don't write. So. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So if there are no further questions for any of the speakers, this ends the session. Thank you for your interesting presentation. As I told you, I am more a technical person, and I really like to see that there is more going on. What sandwich would have been? How much time would you take? I will wait till that time. So get me a sandwich for sure. I'm not eating here anymore. And if I faint, then I will not. Don't worry. I'll give you a sandwich after. Do some screening of the audio. Yeah. Yes. Yes.